As we prepare for the 30th anniversary drop, it's always good to have a general build that works well regardless of changes in each season. Too many builds rely on mods from each season or high-end exotics to power them. Also, some builds require too much tinkering to optimize them when you're just trying to jump in the game and have some fun. One of the reasons for that is that they're optimized for one player to maximize all elements of the game for high-end content. Sometimes you just want to have fun. So in this video, I'm going to discuss a trio of builds that complement each other well, are easy to assemble, don't require seasonal mods or difficult to find exotics, and can be paired to outfit an entire fire team in any three-man activity. I will give you a base that you can use to jump into any activity and play Destiny and then customize your heart's content based on changes that will happen in each season. So again, to make these builds approachable and extendable, I started some pretty basic components. First off, each build is built around a single armor exotic. Now, before you get too concerned about that, all the exotics in this build can be completed through legendary lost sectors that rotate every day between different locations in Destiny 2. If you're not familiar with the rotation, check out the website Today in Destiny and it will tell you the rotation and what armor is available on that day. Complete the Lost Sector solo, and you have a chance at exotic available for that day. These are challenging events that have champions and modifiers, but are definitely doable solo. Obviously, I could have made these builds around other exotics, but those other exotics are usually RNG or take some effort to kind of get through. These, at least, if you play these activities, these legendary or master Lost Sectors, and you play them enough, you're going to get a drop of the exotic that you're looking for, guaranteed. Also to keep it simple, these builds are based on elemental well mods with one specific charge of light mod that can be worked around if you don't have it. The elemental well mods are easy to obtain now if you have missed out on charge of light mods from previous seasons. Charge of light mods obviously you could use in these builds, but again if you haven't gotten those in the past, you now have to wait on a rotation for them to come around. All the elemental well mods are currently accessible through Destiny 2 between now and Witch Queen. If you're unclear on how to get these Elemental WoW mods, they're, again, they're pretty simple. You just have to do seasonal activities. I have another video where I talk about what are the key mods that you want going into Witch Queen and how to obtain them. Check that out now if you're not clear. I'll also utilize Protected Light in all of these builds. This is for extra protection. If you miss this, you'll need to wait for Ada to selling it again. Again, not a big deal if you don't have it. There are other alternatives that you can use to protect yourself and your fire team, but this one is particularly good. Again, as a reminder, this will be a series of three builds, one per class, that you can easily outfit your entire fire team with minimal effort. They complement each other well and can extend as seasons change. Obviously, if you're newer to the game, these would be some really easy to get builds that you could jump into most activities. You can obviously look at my channel. I have plenty of other more extensive builds, but these are fairly easy to put together and you should be able to do that even if you're a new player. So now let's get to it. First off, the hero. The hero is a build that comes in handy in any PVA mode where there is risk that you will end up in a last guardian standing situation. This is a hunter build that focuses on survivability, team support and stealth to help advance your fire team. For this build, we will start with Bottom Tree Night Stalker. Bottom Tree Night Stalker synergizes around your dodge and smoke abilities. When you use your gambler's dodge near an enemy, you get your smoke bomb vamp. Your smoke bomb grants you and your fire team members near you with invisibility. It will also add additional regen abilities and you can stack three times to allow you to get your abilities and super spec faster. If you add to this on Oculus, every time you put your smoke on your fire team, you will more than likely get your smoke bomb back. The more people that are near you when you do that, the more chances you get to get your smoke bomb back. Also, when you smoke yourself and your fire team, you will gain a damage resistance that will help you and your fire team members get out of sticky situations as long as you're invisible. In practice, you can maintain this smoke ability constantly, which will allow you to continuously buff you and your fire team members. If a fire team member goes down, simply go invisible, go to the fire team member, revive them, and then smoke both you and them and get out of dodge. See what I did there? If things get hairy, use your smoke ability to run and hide until you have a safe opportunity to revive your fire team. Your super also has multiple shots, so you have a good opportunity to control the battlefield in tricky situations or do serious damage by hitting a specific enemy multiple times at stacks. And of course, generating orbs with every kill while the super is active will help you and your entire fire team. In addition, it can buff DPS damage, and since it's a debuff, it can stack with other buffs. Obviously, you can customize this build with specific mods and weapons depending on the encounters, but there are some base mods that can help you get the most out of this build. For Elemental Well mods, I start with Reaping Wellmaker. This allows you to drop a Void Well every time you kill an enemy with a weapon after you use your dodge ability. Since you're dodging quite a bit with this build to regenerate smoke, you'll have constant wells. Then I use Well of Tenacity, which grants damage resistance for a period of time after you pick up a Void Orb. Again, this allows you to survive, especially when working to help your fire team. Font of Wisdom allows you to gain 100 intellect for a period of time to speed up your super regeneration. Keep this in mind when designing your build with intellect. Elemental Charge allows you to gain two charges of light when you pick up a Void Well. 
you will use these charges of light with protective light that will allow you to get significant damage resistance when your shield goes down. This will often be a get out of jail free card to prevent a death when you take significant damage over a short period of time. I also add power preservation, which allows your super final blows to create extra orbs for allies. This will allow you to become an orb generator to help your other fire team members get their supers out in those critical moments in the game. Outside that, balance this build with whatever mod you need for champions, abilities, and weapon buffs to customize specific PvE mode you lead into. So, you know, certain Nightfalls are going to have different modifiers, they're going to have match game, they're going to have certain champions, so you'll have to modify some of the mods, you'll have to add on, but this, again, the whole point of this is to give you a base that you can build on top of. Now that you have the hero deployed, let's talk about the next build, which is the Protector. The Protector is a Well of Radiance-based Warlock build whose primary role on the fire team is to protect the fire team and keep them in the fight. This build can also buff DPS on top of the debuff from the hero build. So with Middle Tree Solar Warlock, you have a few key abilities that will assist you with protection. With Divine Protection, you can drop a Blessing by consuming your grenade to help heal allies and drop an Overshield that can be picked up. You can also strike enemies with your melee and inflict burn damage and empower yourself and your allies. Also, while healing allies, you regenerate your abilities faster so you can rinse and repeat. And of course, with Well of Radiance, you can protect your allies and grant them a damage buff during DPS. So while you're running this build, your goal is to heal allies and grant them overshields and regen those abilities in a loop. Continue this until your super comes available and use it in key DPS moments and to protect your fire team when things get hairy. Add to this Boots of the Assembler. With this exotic, you can create noble seekers similar to what you see with Lumina that seek allies not in the rift and heal them. This healing will also extend your rift duration. And when you get your super, then you get the same synergy of your well through its duration. This allows your fire team to be flexible and get the benefit of your rift instead of having to stay in one area. And often, the problem with wells sometimes, or with rifts, is that to heal, people have to be near you. With this, they can go high, they can go in different areas, and still get that healing protection, which is really good for your fire team. Now to add to this, let's talk about some base mods. First off, the Explosive Wellmaker. This will allow you to generate solar wells when you rapidly defeat enemies with explosive damage. So you can do this with grenades, certain weapon effects like Dragonfly, certain weapons. So again, you may have to customize your build a little bit, but this does allow you to generate uh, quite a few well. Add to this Elemental Armament, which allows you to gain wells on kills with weapons that match your subclass. This chance escalates depending on the tier of enemy, so if you kill like a champion, you're almost always going to get a well. If you do a red bar, you probably have to kill a couple red bars, so this pairs well with Explosive Wellmaker to make sure you can always generate wells on a regular basis. Well of Life allows you to gain health regen for 10 seconds. And this isn't just normal recovery. So in other words, you have recovery slowly over time, your health comes back. This is actual real life health regeneration. You can literally stand in a puddle of something that's damaging you. And you can literally during a time not take any damage because you'll see a ticket damage and the health will immediately come back. So it's really nice thing. It only lasts for 10 seconds, but it's a really, really cool buff. And finally, like in the other builds, add elemental charge for your two charger light and protective light to bail you out with damage resistance at the cost of a charge of light when your shield is dropped by an enemy. After that, you utilize whatever mods and weapons to best customize whatever mode you're in. So far, we've talked about builds that primarily are defensive in nature that support the fire team. Because again, one of the keys, especially, you know, in normal PvE, but especially in higher end PvE, is you don't want to die. Again, you don't want to die, you want to survive. I have another video where I briefly talk about that. But you don't want to die because that imbalances the fire team and potentially could lead to issues where you all have to wipe. I've done that with the first two parts of this, but the next one is built on DPS, Add Clear, and General Titan Mayhem. We call him the Destroyer. The Destroyer is a middle tree arc titan build whose primary role on the fire team is to kill things, wreak havoc, and inflict damage on bosses. The middle tree striker titan has several abilities that come into play here. First off is Ballistic Slam, which procs after you sprint and leap in the air. It allows you to power melee down the ground and kill whatever you come into contact with and damage nearby targets. Once you hit an enemy with Ballistic Slam, it gains super energy. And then finally, your Super Thunder Crash will allow you to play Superman and inflict incredible DPS on whatever you hit. So again, the build goal for this class is to kill things and inflict damage. To help with this, we add Curse of the Falling Star that greatly increases Thunder Crash damage on impact. You also gain an overshield that lasts longer the further you travel. This can help you get back out of those sticky situations that you may have gotten into because as you do Thunder Crash, sometimes you're further away from your fire team. Sometimes you land in the middle of a bunch of ads. So it's useful after you do that when you try to get back out there to have overshield to let you be a little bit more protected as you try to extract yourself from whatever hairy situation you've gotten yourself into. So this is a good start, but now let's talk about what mods you need to put in place to help round out this build. First off, let's talk about Melee Wellmaker. Powered melee kills generate arc wells using the focus of the build, which again is the Titan's melee ability. Add to this well of striking. 
picking up arc wells grants melee energy. So you gain wells from melee kills, and then you gain melee energy back when you pick them up. So again, you can see the synergy, how you can kind of loop through this, which is kind of what you're doing with other parts of some of these builds that I've talked about. Well of Vines is next. Picking up an arc well causes your next melee to do additional damage. So this will allow you to take on the beefier targets with your melee and fulfill your destroyer role. Then just like the previous builds, add elemental charge to get charges of light and protected light to help protect yourself and get extended life on your titan. One additional item I did add to this build that is easier to season, but even out to season can be achieved, is I use double hands on mod, which provides super energy when melee kills, which allow you to get your thunder crash sooner. The reason this season's easier is because in the seasonal pass, they're actually really cheap, but you can do this in later seasons because hands-on is just a general service mod. So while the other roles in the fire team can focus on helping the fire team, you can focus on what Titans do, punching things out, slaying out, and then using that Thunder Crash to absolutely destroy bosses. So these builds are base builds that are season agnostic. Again, it doesn't require what season you're in and can be easily put together without a lot of effort. You can customize them in whatever content or season you are to allow you to take down of champions and to match shield and burns. These builds synergize really well together. The hero can bail you out of sticky situations, debuff en enemies, and grant other fire teams a ton of orbs to power their supers. The protector can help buff damage and protect the fire team for the entire match, not just when you're down to your last guardian standing. The destroyer can devastate opponents and inflict maximum damage to bosses, champions, and red bar enemies. Again, it's the slaying ad clear portion of, the, of these builds. For those of you who just want to jump in the game without a lot of build craft and tweaking for hours, these builds can keep on your characters for a long time. You can literally just leave them with your fire team. Maybe you, you get together with a standard fire team of two people, you go into activities, you can split roles, and basically you guys can just keep this on your characters for basically ever. And again, for many of you part-time guardians, this is something that's gonna help you as again, you could spend, and I have tons of videos on my channel where you can go and you'd be very specific about your builds. But with these, it gives you a base that you can start with that you can always tweak if you want to, but allows you to just jump in the game really quickly with your friends and play Destiny, which is what we all want, especially in our part-time. So again, that's the video. If you like the video, feel free to like it, subscribe to my channel, jump in my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.